I'm back. Yeah, so I wasn't actually expecting to be back before the new year, but uh, I mean, you know how the saying goes, don't visit Ohio with crazy. I'm still a little pissed at that, but that's okay. We'll continue. <laughs> how you guys doing? It's uh, it's Merito here as always, and it was a... <laughs> Hi, Mom. Uh, I... In I very much overthink these uh, these introductions when I start, but that's okay. By the way, if the audio seems a little strange, I had to fiddle with levels a whole lot uh, for whatever reason, and my mic sounds significantly worse than usual. Like, I was getting a lot of hiss. In fact, I mean, let me check. It should be. It should be my snowball. It is my snowball. Okay. I, I don't have uh, one of the fancy streamer mics. I just have a snowball, so. But yeah, I'm, uh, it's telling me that the audio bitrate is lower than the recommended, which is a really good sign. Um, but I haven't fiddled with anything in OBS. I'm checking the audio output. Track one is set to an audio bitrate of, of 60, 160 kilobits, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. But we're just going to continue as usual. Um, so yeah, I, I again, like I said, I wasn't expecting to be back before the end of the year. But hey, that's cool. I get to stream one last time in this magical decade that made me who I am, for better or for worse, before we go into the magical Roaring Twenties again. It is frozen because I have a uh, dolphin in the background. It will be like that until I switch back to Dolphin. Um, I wasn't I wasn't too keen on doing uh, Mystery Dungeon this week. Just, I've been way too fucking stressed to uh, bother. But, I mean, aside from the sleepiness today, I've been, I've been good. I've been good. How you guys doing? How you, how's everyone? I suppose I should probably get on the... The dolphin thing. By the way, uh, just for you guys, just for this stream, I have an entire dump of my Wii's NAND right in front of you. So this is everything. I have a whole lot of stuff on the SD card. I don't have a whole lot in system memory just because system memory, you know. Um, but and I, what I found really cool is that I have a couple of, I don't remember what was the uh, utility that does some of the hacks, but... Um, fuck. I use boot me. Um, that lets you back up the NAND to uh, an SD card, and then I just imported it right into Dolphin. Um, but yeah, so you guys get to see exactly what I have on here right now. Of course, I don't have any of my homebrew on here because homebrew. Uh, but it still has the it still has the channels. stuff um and just the normal virtual console stuff that i was playing so i figured just to just to test this out just to start with i would uh i'd play a little bit of musha because musha is fucking fantastic seriously one of the top five virtual console games hands down um but yeah like i said i wasn't planning on doing a whole lot of uh mystery dungeon this stream so i wanted to go with mario kart instead because that's what we've been playing a lot of lately and some awesome is mario kart Oi. That was weird for a moment. Some of the instruments sounded offbeat. It's Musha, but it's all fucked up. That's weird. This game has a great soundtrack. By the way, if anything's off, you guys gotta tell me because my dolphin has pretty much taken up the entirety of the screen. So... Oh, shit. I could have done that better. I suck fucking major ass at this game, for the record, so uh, don't expect don't expect brilliance. But I figured I'd play through a little bit of it on stream, just because. It's Musha. Actually, hold on, let me check. Yeah, from the preview, it's looking alright. Boy. 
Oi. Hi, Cabby. I was getting nervous for a moment because you disappeared for like a half hour. I was like, oh shit, is she going to miss the stream? Thankfully, you're here. Yeah, the Genesis was kind of the console for vertical scrolling shooters, I guess. Aside from the Turbo Graphics, but although I think I do have one Turbo Graphics game on here, uh, Galaga was it Galaga eighty eight or Galaga ninety? I don't remember which one was the arcade one. Musha is great though. Musha is a game that I've been wanting to play since I was like eight years old, strung out on Classic Game Room. Um, oh, my nose is still weird. I was telling Cabby that. Um, I don't normally have spicy stuff because I just I normally don't really care for it, but I had some leftover uh, chicken with this like spicy stuff on it, and I, my my throat got so smothered in like some kind of weird mucus. I was like, oh gosh, I'm dying. Um, I mean, I was able to clear my throat and it was all right, but yeah, that was uh, unpleasant. But my nose is still a little weird from it. I don't know what it was. It was some kind of rub. Not rub, um, like a sauce. Like a sauce. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Alright. Um. Anyway. Yeah. This is already off to a fantastic start. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Borb is talking about fucking singing in the chat, you and me both, but, uh, well, it's, it's not gonna happen until I have something to sing over. Sauce. It's just, it's just the way of the, it's just the way of the sauce. Oh, shit. There she is. Hi, Borb. Fuck! I told you I suck ass at this game. Oh! No, you bastard! Making me waste all of those delicious cans of tab. I don't know what the fuck these things are. You just kind of shoot them and they pop out. So they're, they're cans of tab. That's what I've decided. There we go. Fuck. Normally I'm able to clear out those like pagoda things, but I, uh, I wasn't able to this time. I like vertical scrolling shooters, but they're not my genre. They're just... I'm not good at these whatsoever. Here we go. Here's something I can kill. And my earbud fucking fell out, so I can't hear anything. Good thing this isn't a, a game where the audio is particularly important, I suppose. There we go. Got him. Mm. 
that's it. Oh, I have to kill the head. Attack the tip. <laughs> Fuck! I'm telling you, this is not my genre. Give me, give me my forwards. Aim for the tip. Cavi takes notes. Got him. I'll play through the next level and then we'll get on to what we're actually here for, which is a game that I am kind of actually okay with. How's the audio, by the way? How, the, how are the audio levels, guys? I tried to match them a little bit better than they were um, in the little bit before the stream, but it still wasn't particularly great to my... Uh, to my ears, but hey, maybe it's okay with you guys. Fuck. Oh. Oh. There we go. Alright. Aim for the tip. So apparently my weird little fucking shield thing uh, can take out those cans of tab, which is uh, not particularly ideal, but uh, we'll go with it. We'll go with it for right now. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Come on. Oh, fuck. Stop it. Die. Shoot him in the face. I always love these Japanese shooters and the way that they always have fucking faces that you, you shoot. They always have the weirdest bosses, and some of them include faces. There's a lot of faces in Musha. Y'all motherfuckers are talking in the Discord chat. Stay in my chat. I see you talking about choir, which I was never involved in because, what, you think I participate in something in school? Come on, who do you think I am? I don't know. I want to do music stuff. I, I did feel kind of bad because you really had to start in like middle school for the music stuff, and I uh, I thoroughly missed that train. So I kind of missed out on all the music stuff that I I really wanted to do, I guess. But hey, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and my earbud fell out again. Fuck. Fuck. God, that guy took... What is it with these guys taking so much goddamn firepower? Holy shit. I, I'm pretty sure that's canon in his design, yes. He is a lion bunny. Maybe you, maybe you have small ears. And you know what they say about people with small ears. The audio stopped. That tripped me up for a moment. Hey, more faces! <laughs> more faces! Oh my god. Ah! Die. Shit! I'm telling you. 
This isn't our day. Not with Musha. Let's go with the classic controller, though. Feels good. Got him. Mission complete. Return to base. Got him. I think that's a good time to stop. What about you guys? I suppose we'll get on the actual the actual game that we're playing. But yeah, I really do like that the the, uh, the utility that com uh, customizes the Wii menu actually still works even when your uh, Wii NAND is just kind of dumped and not on the original hardware. That's why you don't hear any of the background music because I turned it off. It's stretched. What do you mean it's stretched? I don't see what you're talking about, Mon. I mean, I'll check. It looks fine to me. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean it's stretched? Musha? Okay, well, as long as it's not a problem with the actual game, I think we're good. <laughs> Although I do like the idea of it being called MAGA. Because, uh, you know, four more years. By the way, four more years. So, uh, anyway. Let me get game installed i tried like hell last night to get this fucking game dumped on my actual wii because i thought it'd be cool i know they're pretty much the same as any other version you can get online but i thought it'd be cool if i was just able to like take my actual disc and dump it and then use it i felt that would you know, be kind of cool and then neither of the dumping utilities worked uh usb loader gx decided to go really slow and freeze several times and clean rip decided to outright freeze so yeah What do you mean? I'm 100% he's going for four more years. He is the incumbent. He's not going to stop now. And there's been no Republican challengers. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty much a given that it's going to it's going to be uh Trump versus whoever. Uh we're we're thinking Biden um but boy, that would be embarrassing. That would just be very very embarrassing if um wait make sure that's a little bit lower um Sorry, I'm trying to do basic bitch mixing right now on the fly. <laughs> don't worry, we got the we got the we got the Wiimote strap. We're good. Even though I don't actually have a Wiimote because it's a RafNet adapter, but we're good. I was actually surprised at how well this game uh, is is working. Uh, although I will caution you. I will very much caution you. You see this? You see this we up here? This me up here? He's gonna get seriously fucked up during the course of this game, and I have no clue why. All of the me's in this game are absolutely terrifying to look at. I don't know why. Dolphin just fucks them up so bad, but it's fully playable. And I'll get to the reason why I dumped my Nand. Which I mean, I could have just dumped the save game, but where, where would be the fun in that? And I wasn't actually sure if it was gonna dump the me's that were necessary too. DCB said they would work fine, but um, I just wanted to be sure, so I just took the entire thing. Anyway. Alright. So now we are on to the game itself. And I've basically unlocked everything in this game. No, it was not online shit that made me dump my NAND. Um, because I have to patch it before I go online anyway, so that wasn't my concern. 
The concern was that I wasn't able to get my knees um, transferred over. Anyway, so the one thing that I've been doing in between getting my ass handed to me on WFC is uh, doing time trials. And that's because I set a lot of these time trials years and years ago. And just, you know, that was before I 100% I knew what I was doing. Can we do online stuff this stream? I don't know if I can get it working through Dolphin. I feel like, I mean, isn't there the seven day wait requirement when you try to register a new console? Although I, I, maybe maybe it'll recognize it. You know what, let's try that. Just for Mon, let's see if I can get online real quick before I do time trials. I, I don't really know. I feel like this would have to be patched. This isn't a patched version. Um, nope. So it would have to be patched. And I don't know where I would get the patch for it real quick. If somebody wants to dig around for the way that you patch this stuff right in Dolphin, go right ahead. Because I know that people do that. Um, I would assume because, again, it's the same NAND, uh, it would be, you know, fine. But that's not what we're going to be doing right now. So if somebody wants to dig up how to do that, maybe I'll devote, you know, 10, 20 minutes and later on in the stream... DCB can hop on or Mon can hop on and we can do some stuff online. But for right now, I want to do uh, time trials. And I've been taking like two to six seconds off of, I could, I just would need to know how. So if somebody wants to drop the link to, to uh, like a, a how-to on that in chat, go right ahead. Um, I just don't know how to do that. I've been using the the homebrew patcher utility before I load the game and that's been working fine um, anyway so like I said I've been taking like two to six seconds off of every single record as I've been going through this and just trying to beat everything and I've already gotten my scores or I've gotten better times on all of the custom tracks or the ones that actually came with the game but I decided to save the retro tracks for this stream because I wanted to start doing some of these. Right, I don't know how to do it on Dolphin though. So if somebody wants to tell me how to do it on Dolphin, I will do it, but I don't know how to do that right now. Anyway, so let's just get on with it. You can tell us old you can tell this is old because I was using Birdo at the time. I haven't used Birdo in years. Even most of the uh, time trial ghosts that I set last time for the built in courses, they were using the Koopa Troopa. But, yeah, I was using Birdo now. Shit. Alright. And then I think the best strategy... I'm gonna jet over this. Oh, I... I actually don't know if that's really a shortcut or not. Uh, Mon... I would prefer if that was something that you could pop in the chat, because I'm not going to be looking at uh, Discord right now. Alright, so are we? Not, do you not want me to do online stuff if it's for later? I think I've already fucked this one. I actually... I'll just try doing the normal route and seeing uh, what's going on here. Because I was trying to use that shortcut, but... I, th I feel like the shortcut is actually a lot slower than just doing it normally. Just going the normal way. Fuck. Yeah, so this isn't going to be a huge time saver, I suppose. But... Seven tenths of a second, that's not terrible. I've definitely beaten out ghosts a whole lot slower. Do you have dolphin specific instructions, I guess is what I'm asking, because I don't know. Like, I, again, I'm not checking what you're uh, looking at or what you sent in chat. Um, I don't know if that is for dolphin or if that's for the Wii uh, specifically. 
If that is for Dolphin, then I'll have a look at it in a bit, I guess. Uh, I don't know what the hell these things are, but they fucking freak me out. Yeah, I should have used my mushroom ages ago, but I didn't. So I'll just use it on this straight away and call it there. And... There we go. I don't know if I'm going to be taking these times back to... Uh, my console or what, but um, let's see how much of a save that was, because I actually didn't check the time. Three seconds, yeah, so that's basically what you'd expect, like two to five seconds cut on my PBs before. Thank you, Vorb. I've never played Super Mario Sunshine, because I didn't have a GameCube growing up. I'm, uh, I'm just kind of going with it. Hi there, Mind Robber. How's it going? Yoshi Falls. This is one that's always perplexed me because I feel like the faster way is to go through the um, is to go through the water, but I also feel like the water slows you down. So again, we're gonna have to. I'll have to check to see exactly how much time I can really save on this. All right, thanks, DCB. I will check that in a bit. That was, that was not great. Yeah, okay, miss. I just got Animal Crossing and I'm so hype. I'm sure it's just a thing for nerds. Fuck. <laughs> I need to stop dicking around. All good. Sometimes these take me an hour. I think it took me an hour to actually best my time on... I, have, I don't remember what course it was. Oh, fuck. I guess I can't drift through the water. I'll just try going straight and seeing uh, how I was doing it. Yeah, that works. And then I guess I just mushroom through this water bit. And... And... I am still lagging this ghost significantly. Some of this, I feel like I might end up not actually beating any. Unless I specifically fucked up somewhere. Mm, there we go. Yeah, I'm still trailing this ghost. So, maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe this is one of those courses that I just kind of, um, I'm not going to be able to cut any time on. Although I did cut a whole lot of time off of the uh, off the, the base courses, so yeah, I don't I don't think that's I don't think this one's working out too great. Let me check which. Uh... See, I would think that, um, but I also you know what I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna watch my old replay and see how exactly I was doing that. My leg is itchy. Alright. So I... So I seem to skip the water. Where'd I use my mushroom on this? I used it on the straightaway. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is just for funsies, because I actually don't really study the expert. I don't really watch other people's time trials. I, I kind of have just been trying to beat my own times totally on my own. Uh, but I'm going to watch the uh, Nintendo expert ghost and see exactly what he's doing to cut four seconds off of that. And I understand that some of it probably comes down to um, using specific racers and specific cards. So he mushrooms through that. He skips this water bit. Okay. 
Does he skip the rest of the water bits? No. He hits... Okay. So it's it's a whole lot of... Uh... Okay. Well, now I want to try it again, because that seems fair. Alright. And because the focus is, again, on trying to cut my own times and not the expert ghost, I'm going to be racing my old ghost. Um, and I understand that probably, like, using different carts and different racers can have an effect on the times, too. But th there's a reason I go with specifically, even though I've unlocked everything, I go with the... Oh, shit. There's a reason I go with uh, the Koopa Troopa and the standard bike, because this is what handles the best to me. DCB uses the bullet bike, and I don't know how the fuck he do I don't know how he does it. Fuck, I keep doing that. I don't know how he does it. Because the turning radius on it, I'll do it in a bit. I'll try it on a, like, Mario Circuit on something, or a, something. Um, I don't know how he does it. The turning radius on it is so shit. Whoops. I need to stop fucking around. The turning radius on it, when you try to drift, is so tight. You can't... Or at least I can't. I'm used to there being this wide sort of circle. Alright. So that already puts me way ahead of my ghost. And you boost through the water. I mean, I executed this like actual shit, but this uh, seems to be working fairly alright. curious what my final time will be because like I said I, I kind of I executed this like kind of dog shit e but uh, you know still still faster than my 13 all right 11 cool and this is what I always appreciate because this is this is another reason why I brought my save over is so I could show you guys my times progressions because I've actually had this game since uh, the Wii was actually, you know, a thing, really. And that's been uh, a lot of fun, is sometimes watching myself cut 10, 15 seconds off of a course since I've been playing it, you know. There's just something, something neat about it. Even if it doesn't save all those ghosts, it certainly lets you see the times. So, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna show you the my failing with the bullet bike because I just I just don't I just I can't I just fucking can't I'll do Luigi circuit actually um or no I'll do Mario circuit and can I just can I just do it with no ghost See, so, like on this turn, I'm so used to the wide turn radius that, as you saw, and I'll I'll show this again, I'm so used to uh, it having, you know, that really wide turn that I'll go into this turn expecting that and just slam into the wall. So, I would basically have to relearn my muscle memory for the entire course. And the bullet bike is technically faster, but that's why I'm trying not to be competitive about it, because... There are faster ways to get through these courses. There are faster bikes, but it's it's such a shit show. Like I would have to see, I would have to really go wide on that turn because otherwise, I just I'm just so used to having that wide turn when I go to drift, you know. But I'll try to do a little bit with this uh, with this course and fuck. I say as I smash the Goomba. Like I do. See? I'm so used to that. That, like, I'm... 
I'm trying to judge when I'm supposed to start drifting, and I just, I just can't. I've already lost a significant amount of time. Ah, DCV, how do you do this? How does, how do you, how does this work for you? Fuck. I can't. I can't. Alright. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna go back to my normal bike, thank you. Alright, and where were we? Oh! Speaking of DCB, our favorite course. See, you guys don't know this. But Ghost Valley 2 has become somewhat infamous, I guess you could call it. There's a good reason for that. I actually don't know where it started. It's Ghost Valley, it's go time! Oh shit. One thing I want to learn while I'm here, by the way, so this might take me a couple of attempts, is that jump, apparently because I'm using a featherweight racer, uh, doesn't require a mushroom to get over that gap. So I'm kind of interested in learning the timing for that because, you know, being able to cut off a couple seconds of an already, you know, it is go time and then I die. Listen, I suck at this game until I pull off one thing that's kind of cool, okay? That's just how it goes. Maybe it is faster to use the mushroom there. I'm actually not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Where would be the fastest place to use the mushroom on the course? I don't know the rules for the whole mushroom thing, honestly. I just kind of do it where there's uh, an obvious kind of shortcut that... Uh... Fuck. I keep doing that. Um... I just do it where there's a... Uh, because usually the shortcuts are kind of hidden away behind something that will slow you down. Like on Maple Treeway. It's kind of a... Uh, it's like a... God damn it. It's, uh, there's, it's actually right at the start. It's really easy to miss. But there's actually a bit of mud... And then right next to it is a, is a skip. And I only learned this after I started watching people use it on WFC. I'm like, I didn't know that existed. Damn. These ghosts are actually surprisingly good on the retro courses. I, seriously, you guys should have seen it. I was cutting off like several seconds on all of the ones that were built into the game. And then the retro courses, I'm actually not sure. These are, I don't know, fairly s solid. There has to be something better. Usually just better driving is kind of... Oops. I hopped over the ramp. Usually better driving is just what got me, you know, the speed up in times. Doing wheelies, cutting corners a little bit tighter. Uh, you know, that counts for a lot when you're doing time trials. It's not all just, you know, skips and stuff like that. See, I'm noticing right there I'm doing, like, a lot of really wide turns, and I'm just... There we go. That's... Fuck! Uh, 
Of course, the moment I actually stream this, I start sucking at it, but, you know. Whatever. Oh, fuck. That's gonna be a spin out. The way I see it, if I, you know, pull off a decent PB, that's cool. Fuck! I keep doing- Now I'm doing it intentionally. And if I just keep fucking up, I figure it'll be amusing to somebody. So, you know what? Whatever. It's fine. It's a video game. Damn it. See, I go into that so wide and lose so much time. Fuck. Let me... Would I have to hop earlier? Or maybe use the mushroom earlier, I think, is, is how I'm going to not have such wide turns on that. Fuck. Get used to me restarting, by the way, because I'm going to be restarting a lot, trying to figure these courses out a little better. Or doing that. It's a whole lot easier to judge on 7, I've noticed. Because I didn't have my Wii for a little while, so I was playing a lot of uh, 7, and I never spun out. Fuck, I used the mushroom way too late. I never spun out when I was doing the, the starting boost on 7, but when I was doing it on um, Wii, I mean, as you've noticed, I, 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 some, I misjudge it a lot. Fuck. And I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure why that is. I try to go from when the 2 flashes white. That's when I try to start holding, but I guess my reflexes are kind of shit. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that. If somebody knows the actual time I'm supposed to hit 2, um, or I'm supposed to hit A, come on. This is another reason why I need to, I need to get a proper console set up, because Dolphin's been weird. Yeah, I'm going to blame it on the technology, yes, I am, because I'm that person. In the worst case scenario, I'll go try another course. Come back to this one. That was a really early boost. Jesus. Or a really late one, I mean. There we go. Come on! See, if I don't start drifting before, or if I don't hop before the ramp, I just go straight. So... Fuck, that was actually kind of good. <sighs> it's hot in here. It really is. Alright, this is going to be my last attempt, and... Alright, my next successful boost is going to be my last attempt, I promise. And I'll go try another course. Oh, come on! 
My timing is all weird. There we go. I just want to at least match my ghost. No. Nope. I guess that's as fast as I can get it, is 103597. Unless I magically stop sucking or something. But hey, at least I actually did it, you know, 20 fucking attempts later. We were talking about Mario Kart 64 a little bit earlier in the chat, and I really don't like the Mario the, the Mario Kart 64 courses that they, especially the ones that they include in this game. They're just so, um, basic. So flat. And I get that it was the N64, but that's not really an excuse. You know? Oh, fuck. That was why. But there you could see why, uh, or how I was able to cut, you know, a couple seconds off these PBs and why I thought it would make a good stream. is because you see that even when I'm doing wheelies and stuff, I wasn't trying to boost. So, you know, doing that more with my ghosts, um... There we go, that's better. You can see that I can gain a couple seconds off my ghost just from driving a little bit better. Um, and even then, I just lost probably a couple hundredths of a second from um, not doing a lot of wheelies at the start there. But there we go. That's, that's a little more like what I was getting. I, I had a few bum tracks. All right. Again, I'm going to... I'm gonna just chalk it up to that. Oh, that was close. Oh, shit. Whatever. It's fine. Worst case scenario, I'll just uh, redo this again. Because I already know that I'm gonna be able to get a couple seconds off this. But. Uh, I remember it was Luigi's Mansion, I think, was uh, another course where... I had cut the corners, especially on the end, so tight that um, a lot of the time I was going into the mud instead of into, like, that. Oh, let me check this. <laughs> yeah, we will... Uh... <laughs> We'll go with that. We'll uh, we'll go with that, Kevy. I can't say anything, but I I acknowledge what you had sent. Yes, I will talk to you about that later. <laughs> Whew. All right, let's try this again. It's boost wheelie boost. Or sometimes just awkwardly wait for a boost. I need to cut that a little bit sharper. I keep going wide and ending up in the grass. Oh, you and your fucking winky faces. Go away. I'm streaming. That might have been too 
too early. That was good, though. That was good. I also noticed that there's a there was there's more of an off-road penalty in Wii than there is in Seven. Um, but using my mini boost at the end of that was able to, to for, the, for the for the most part sort of negate that. There we go. See, this is I'm probably going to be leading this ghost by like five or six seconds when I'm uh, finished. Just because I drive way more fucking aggressively now. And that's my, that's sort of my strategy in all the games I play. Oh, and I went in the grass. That's sort of the strategy in all the games I play. I play really fucking sloppy. So, although I can make big things happen, they're never particularly like, I can never FC a song in Guitar Hero. But I can hit some crazy shit, you know, kind of thing. I just don't have the patience to be 100% perfect. And that's why I'll never be a speedrunner. But, hey, at least I can stream uh, record attempts, or at least PB attempts, for, like, a couple people online. And I'm sure you guys are at least mildly amused, at least when I fuck up. So. There we go. They say practice makes perfect, but I don't have patience for that. It's fucking Mario Kart. Like I was talking to DCB about. Ah, fuck, I landed in the grass again. This game is uh, the definition of unbalanced, so... I'm sure you can be mechanically perfect with it, but do I want to be mechanically perfect with it? Not really. I think it's more fun to be an absolute train wreck. Hence this stream. Damn it. I hate it when I'm expecting a boost and it doesn't come. It feels like fucking blue balls. Throws me off. took that turn real fucking wide. There we go. Yeah, I had to just straight up stop there. I know that I lost time, but... I'd rather complete uh, a slightly less than perfect run than be here all night. Although I am going to be here all night. <laughs> I said I it feels like fucking blue balls. And my earbud fell out again. Because I keep emoting, even though none of you can see me. I'm well on my way to becoming a Twitch thought. Fuck. And then I go in the grass by my own choice. Alright, you know what? Fuck the headphones. I'm gonna just drop those on the desk. And I'm gonna play in silence. Which means chat needs to try extra hard to entertain me. As I try to go for these incredibly difficult records. As we all know, this is world record pace right here. Ooh, that was good. Now, if only I could do that for the next two laps. Mm. Thank you, Nicole. See if I can just cut that 2.2 seconds on every single lap. That's why we'll be here. That is why. Mm. I went too early on that. But I'll take it. Ooh, 
leading my ghost by five seconds. Fuck, I went too early and I landed in the grass. Fine, I just need to practice this more, and it's another reason why I I couldn't be a speedrunner. I couldn't do those streams where they just attempt fucking frigate agent over and over. I feel like that would be absolute hell for you guys, you know? Although it'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool when it's all said and done. Two minutes. Two minutes and 37 hundredths of a second? Thousands of a second? I don't remember how that goes. That's not bad, though. See, you can tell how old some of these times are, because I was still using the Wii Wheel at the time. I haven't used the Wii Wheel in God knows how long. That's cool. That's a cool 16 seconds off since I started playing. 37 thousandths of a second? Alright. Alright, so let's follow up one N64 course with another N64 course, which is just as boring. But, um... And this one's actually fairly close to the Expert Ghost, so I'm actually kind of curious if I can cut any time whatsoever off this. If not, I won't spend as much time on it as uh, as I did with Ghost Valley 2. I just have something to prove about that course. For no reason, I'm sure. Oops. I was expecting to hop over that gap, but I didn't. Yeah. That was, that was the big thing, the Wii Wheel! You know, it's gonna feel like a real steering wheel, and then everyone stopped using it. Fuck. Because the Wii Wheel blows. I don't know if you've noticed it. But the Wii Wheel fucking sucks if you're trying to do anything actually, like, specific with this game. I should have been wheeling, but I didn't. And that's another thing, by the way. I actually might not take that ramp next time. But aren't they all just fuck? Aren't they all just chunks of plastic at the end of the day? You know? Aren't they all? Like the Wii Zapper. It's literally just a Rube Goldberg machine to press B, but uh, that doesn't stop it from looking... Interesting. Were those like official Nintendo things? The plastic golf club and the bat? I thought those were like nonsense third party things that someone came up with. See, it's actually faster if you just skip the ramp. That's why I, I, I pretty much, unless I have to take air, I just don't. YouTube censored you. For calling you a dip, but you're a mod. You're a mod on my stream. How did YouTube fucking censor you? Sorry, now I'm paging through. Damn, that blows. Fucking YouTube. Getting in the way of me and Cabby being fucking really gay. I, I remember having something like that, and it felt really fucking cheap. Like, even as far as plastic nonsense used to make your console feel more like a like an experience, they felt fucking cheap. So, and I don't remember them ever being in, like, the commercials for Wii Sports or anything, which is another reason why, whoops. Which is another reason why I was like, yeah, I don't know if those are real. I don't know if those are official, I should say. Oh, shit. Why did I do that? That was good. That was actually, that was like as close to a, a perfect boost as you can get. And then I just immediately slammed into the wall because fuck everything. And that was a really late boost, so I'm going to be eating that one. Although, it doesn't seem to affect me that much. Because I just kind of...
Let me not hit the penguin this time. Or maybe they have a funny name in, in Mario Land. <laughs> Let me not hit the penguin. Hits the penguin. Fuck. Ugh. That was bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to find a straightaway to read that big ball, fucking wall of text that you just sent mine, Robert. Give me a moment. No, because it's like in Mario. Sometimes they have like dumb names for, uh, you know, what are clearly obviously common animals. I don't know where you're supposed to use the mushroom for this, but I'm going to use it there because I don't know where I would use it on the rest of the course. That's the way I used it. After, um, after the first initial times where I used the wheel, I just kind of said, fuck it. Um, because who, who wants to bother with that? At least with the zapper, I get to feel like, well, not really, because it's not really looking like a gun or anything, but at least I get to feel like I'm, I don't know, shooting aliens or something. I don't know. I, I feel like the Wii's weird fetish with, like, motion controls and uh, being, like, a, a new way to control your game. I could probably get some speed if I, if I cut that up into different smaller boosts, but... Um, I already have trouble not hitting that penguin, so fuck it. Um, but I feel like the Wii's little obsession with like motion controls and like finding a different way to control. There's the frog suit, yeah. Uh, finding different ways to control your game is like the predecessor to VR, and both of them are fucking stupid. At least the Wii made sense because it was cheap. I mean, you know, comparatively cheap. 599 US dollars. Anyone remember that? No. Um, but. You know, VR is significantly more expensive and doesn't really add a whole lot. It's just kind of like, oh, head tracking. Wow, it's so amazing. It turns with my head. Wow. And then I'm just... What what, what would I have done without all this amazing technology? I don't even give a fuck. I don't even give a fuck. <laughs> I don't even give a fuck that I hit the wall. This is already saving several seconds off of my PB, so fine. That was cool. That was cool. I might actually go for that one another time. Uh, because I definitely... You can see I lost a hundredth of... Or, uh, five tenths of a second um, when I hit that wall. Wow. That was good. I might go for that another time, though, actually. Just to... Uh, just to officially solidify it. Because I think that if I go for... Although it's going to be a little bit more difficult, I think if I split that big winding section up into smaller boosts, I can actually get more speed out of it. I really thought I was going to hit the wall that time. But, whatever. Ooh. Lordy. See, I don't think this is going to be a massive time save, if at all, compared to my old ghost, or the one that I just set, but, again, I want to try this method of... Nope. That was the risk that I took with the smaller boosts, because I felt like I was probably going to hit the wall instead of... Because I'm trying to compensate for not hitting the penguin, you know? But that actually seemed to have worked a little bit. So I'm going to keep trying that. I really don't think eating that chicken was a great idea. I'm starting to fucking feel massively ill. It's fine, though. I will keep you guys company. I have dedicated myself to streaming, and it's not like I have salmonella. It's fine. I'm just... I don't like spicy stuff. It's, it's just like, especially when it's artificial, like really artificial tasting, like spicy stuff. It just, it just is like disgusting. It's so chemically, so chemically, you know, I'm just, I'm not into it. I like salty. 
Tabby and I were talking about. Oh, fuck. We were talking about flavors last night, and hell, I, I've just sort of gone off the whole sweets thing. I used to have so much fucking candy and what have you, and now I'm just like, eh. It's not that I'm some crazy health nut right now, I just, I don't know, I'd rather have, like, again, salty stuff. Even if it's just fucking chips, it's better than this crazy, heavy, thick, sugary fucking snack food nonsense. Snack cakes are just like, ugh, I don't like it. Those especially I have basically been turned off to. Hmm. Huh. So I guess that's not as fast as I was expecting. Or maybe it's just because I keep trying to not lag my ghost. But I was actually expecting that to be a, a better time save. So maybe that's not... Maybe that's not actually... Maybe just the one long boost is, is just as fast as a couple smaller boosts. I don't know. Oh. That's the risk you take. If you go too far off that crack, you kind of hop. So let me not do that. That's working better. I feel like if I tried to boost some, like if I tried to milk a couple more boosts out of like this straightaway or something, or around that rock, uh, I could potentially save a little bit of time, but... Oh, I'm, uh, that's fine. That's actually, oops. I was getting a little bit ahead of my ghost there. Yeah, I, again, it's mostly that little uh, blemish at the end that I think I'm going to save time on if I, if I try this again. Because you remember that I hit the wall and basically lost a full half a second off that? Boost. And I'm coming out a little bit ahead. About a half a second. That's cool. There we go. So I was trying to do a... Uh, I don't know if it saves really any time whatsoever, but I was trying to do a mini turbo on that rock. Fuck! Damn it, this was going so well! Alright, <laughs> All right, whatever, fuck it. Fuck it, I'm just gonna do another course. I am satisfied with the PB that I set earlier, that's fine. And again, I'm probably gonna be redoing all these on hardware anyway, so I'm not, I'm not too, too concerned. Alright, Delfino Square time. I like Delfino Square. Again, you can tell how old this is because I was using Birdo. I, I don't remember when I started using the Koopa, but honestly, Birdo feels clunky now. I'm not used to the heavy racers. I'm so used to the Koopa Troopa being so damn light that when I try to use a heavier racer, I kind of just... It, it doesn't feel right. It's the same thing with the Bullet Bike, although not as prominent. The Bullet Bike, I just I just don't understand. I feel like it's a thing where you kind of have to, you just kind of have to use it a bunch and then like hope for the best. I like Delfino Square. Mario Kart DS is a clunky piece of shit now, but I really like Delfino Square, so I'm glad it's in this game. And I don't think, oops, I thought I let go of that. I don't think when I was setting these PBs, I was using the, uh, the skip over the lake, not the lake, um, the river. The one where you go down to the dock and um, you use a mushroom and then you launch yourself. Again, the mushroom sort of launch boosts uh, and shortcuts, I don't 
really like because I don't really have control over them. Or at least I don't feel like I have control over them. So I try to avoid them when I can, although sometimes they are kind of necessary. I like, I prefer the shortcuts in like, um, like Maple Treeway is, uh, as I've mentioned it before. But that's another good example of, uh, of a boost that I, I like where you, as soon as you get the timing of when you're supposed to use the mushroom down at the start, uh, it feels really good. Uh, Do I go straight or do I go... I'm gonna go straight. If it turns out that doing that weird-ass turn is faster... Ah. That's what that looks like. Okay. Um... You know what? Maybe that won't be too difficult. Because that's more of a... That's more of a straight kind of boost thing. Maybe that won't be too difficult. I'm gonna try that. But you can, you sort of saw, I don't think I was using that when I set this PB, so. There we go, that's better. That is significantly faster, though. You saw that I actually was beating my ghost by a couple seconds there, so I'm gonna try to get that down a little more, and then I think I can use that to uh, to good effect. Oops. But yeah, I honestly, it's funny. I've never played Super Mario Sunshine, but I, I I've always liked the aesthetic of like the Isle of Delfino and what have you. Um, even if the game kind of seems kind of gay cleaning up with water jets and what have you. I just, I like the, uh, I like the aesthetic of, like, this weirdly compact, yet kind of small, like, almost Italian town. I like that, you know? Alright, boost. Yeah, that's, that's good. Oops. <laughs> I say that's good as I hit that wall again. Alright. I think I can do that. Come on, come on. Birdo looks fucking weird from the back. Can I mention that? Birdo, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm staring at somebody's bare ass, basically. Every time I look at Birdo from the back. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna leave Birdo behind and we're gonna forget we ever saw that. Birdo is incredibly an uncomfortable character. There we go. Oh my god, that's faster. That is... Oh! So so much for that! Oh, shit. Alright, so I guess the faster thing to do is go through the alleyway. I actually forgot about the alleyway. Okay. Maybe I should pay attention to what my ghost is doing before I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna beat the... I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat my old time, and... It turns out I didn't beat Jack or shit. It's alright, though. <sighs> All right, so I guess I'm not using the water skip. Because I guess the alleyway is faster. Ooh, shit. So that's not that's not straight. That's like a weird kind of twisty turn. Right. Does Birdo not look really weird from the back? Am I just crazy?
probably should have tricked there, but I've been trying not to trick lately because I just feel like it's it slows you down. Although it seems to be working for me because I'm apparently beating my ghost by a second and a half, so whatever. Keep it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it going. Ah, fuck. So chat, how's it going lately? I haven't been streaming for the past couple weeks because I actually didn't mention this because I thought I was going to be able to get one more stream in before, um, before I left, but I ended up going to Ohio to stay with family and it was a fucking disaster. A genuine fucking disaster that I don't think I've ever seen or ever will see again. Ah, uh, and I don't just mean Ohio. Um, yeah, it was kind of deeply unpleasant, honestly. I, I meant to see, like, Lake Erie and all the, all the nice little extra places, and then I just didn't get to see any of it, so. I'm back in Pennsylvania. And I'm a little upset, I'm not gonna lie. We keep going. Apparently, even with that fucking... Even with that wall uh, hit, apparently I'm still, like, half a second faster than this ghost. I, Like I said, I have no doubt that any of my times could be beaten by somebody who actually knows what they're doing, but I, uh, I have fun trying to beat my own times, so it's fine. I don't... Uh, I've been trying not to do that lately, that whole, you know, family is just fucking, you know, a disaster thing. But, my family isn't great. That's, that's, that I, eh, I don't really like to, to mention it, but my family really is not fucking great in the, in the slightest. I've tried. These people are, oh, come on. These people are all insane, basically. Um, and yeah, so I, I kind of showed up and, uh, my brother kind of turned out to be a giant bug man basically and we calculated it the dude has spent cabby maybe you could check my dms real quick and uh tell me how how come on how um how much it was we calculated how much funko pop goodness this guy had Yeah, to be perfectly honest, I we don't really keep in touch with any of our extended family. I don't even really know who they are. Um, but they're all kind of, or at least the ones that I know of, um, are all kind of really trashy. I mean, I'm square in the middle of Appalachia. What do you expect? Um, and I don't say that as like a, you know, to deride people who do kind of, uh, well, you know, the people who aren't super great off, but, like, you carry yourself with some kind of standard, please. Yeah, and for whatever reason, people don't understand, and this gets right up my ass, people do not understand how to be an average of 3400 fucking dollars, and we were starting to think of, like, everything that we could have done with all the money this guy spent on Funko Pops. Fucking Funko Pops. Mindless goddamn consumerism is a cancer, a plague, a pox, and I can't stand it. And that's, you know, not including all the money that he spent on every fucking streaming service. Bugman. Not even once. Anyway, people don't understand how to host a guest. And it constantly fucking frustrates me. The way that people will just... They don't understand how having a guest over works and further they don't understand their obligations as an as a as a host holy shit seven seconds fuck all right nice yeah and it's like i this guy is apparently so much more fucking functional than i am whatever dude i'm telling you my uh 
without without turning this into oh I hate my family so much you know without turning it into that kind of stream yeah I have problems with these people and they're they're problems that I've largely spent the year getting over I'm just like whatever I have better people waiting for me on the other side she's in the chat right now anyway um but people have no concept of how they're supposed to host people they have no concept of uh you know how to be polite as a host uh and it it just gets me no fucking end they don't check on their guests sometimes they they get upset at their guests for the dumbest shit let's see how much time i cut off by the way 11 seconds i'll take it um they get upset at their guests for the dumbest fucking things like i'm over at this guy's house and I'm just gonna throw this out here. I mean, I know it's mostly Somnolians in the chat, but like, is it is it strange at all to ask somebody where they keep their cups? I didn't think it was. And he's like, that was a stupid fucking question. They decided to fight with me instead of just telling me where the fucking cups are. Cause he's like, oh, you can look for it yourself. I'm like, I don't live here. I don't want to just go through your shit. And it's like, I, do you understand in the slightest how to host somebody and how to be polite? It's not weird to ask someone where their cups are. And I felt like I was in fucking upside down land because this guy wanted to fight with me and tell me, oh, there's only eight cabinets, just look for a cup. No, tell me where the fucking cups are. This is not hard. Apparently it was though. And I'm telling you, it's like this guy disappears out of my life for fucking like seven or eight years. And <laughs> all of a sudden now he's like, oh, I wanna reconnect with you, you know? And then that stupid shit happens, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you really, really want to understand me. I'm sure you really want to get any deeper than telling me where your goddamn cups are. Uh, his house was fucking disgusting anyway, so fuck these people. And yeah. Yeah. Seriously, like, you have all these cabinets all over. You have one for, like, dishes. You have one for, like, all of your cooking equipment. You have one for all of your snacks that you never eat, so they're all, like, six months out of date. And you want me to just look through all of this looking for cups? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't actually know where I used the mushroom on this course, so I'm just going to use it there. And uh, we'll see if my ghost ever catches up. Uh, it's, just, it's just so astounding. People look at the batshit way that they grew up and the batshit way that they were raised and they go, oh yeah, that's just the way it's supposed to be. That's just, and I understand that coming to this realization and, and sort of challenging your perception of how things happen, I get that that's not the easiest thing to do. I get that for some people it takes several years. You know, it's something that I only realized as, you know, this year started and I've been kind of working on it ever since. Um, but it's something that you kind of need to do in order to, you know, be a functional person, not held back by how uh, batshit your fucking folks were when you were, you know, 11 years old. Whoops. And people just never do it. And that's, that's how, that's how crazy shit happens. That's how you get crazy people. People with no introspection whatsoever and people who will never question the way that they were raised, you know? And sometimes you get people who were raised wrong and they have the total opposite reaction which is to totally write off their parents and continue to act 16 forever which also happened in this family I, I might as well just go into it i don't care um you know you have people who they just want to go oh yeah my folks were the fucking they were the worst they they and and the thing is even if somebody is legitimately abusive you don't necessarily have to look at that and go, well, you know, that's, you know, that's the end of it. Because the, the goal is not supposed to be to get rid of your family. Even if your family is, unless your family is actively trying to kill you, your, your goal should not be to get rid of them. Your goal should be to come to terms with what they did, you know? And I, again, I say this as somebody who, you know, family hasn't been fucking great to me you know um but it's also not been the worst you know they're not i'm not being you know kept in an attic 
with the windows painted or anything. So, it could be a lot worse. And that's the thing, you have to, you have to be fair. I'm not saying you have to like everything that's happened, but you have to be fair about it. And people just don't. They either say, oh, everything that's happened to me is the worst of all time, or they make excuses for genuinely bad shit, and I just don't understand it. The world has all this gray area, and people want to look at it like it's black and white, because black and white's, of course, the nice, comforting way to look at it, of course. You know, it's easy to say, oh, these people are the good guys, and these people are the bad guys, and that, you know, there's no gray area whatsoever. There's no room for any subtlety, nuance, none of it. You know, just, it's a Saturday morning fucking cartoon. And it just gets so tiresome, because this is people in arrested fucking development. You know, part of being an adult is that you're supposed to eventually move past it and be like, oh yeah, you know, people, people were raised wrong, people don't know how to parent, you know, sometimes bad shit happens, but they tried, you know, um, the solution is not to, to go to either extreme, but to be like, yeah, you know what, it could have been better, it could have been a lot worse, I've made peace with it, which is more than I could say for my older siblings. That's my little rant for today about people's uh, family values nowadays. It's just such a fucking mess. And, you know, I, a lot of people have families that are just kind of strange. And of course, you know, it's easy to be like, oh, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But it, it takes time to unlearn this stuff and to not be emotional and to just be like okay well what works and what doesn't because that's it at the end of the day that's all that matters is what works and what doesn't that's a six second cut by the way that's fucking great um you just have to you, you just have to be somewhat realistic about things you know And it's easier said than done, I understand that, but people just don't. And I don't understand how or why. <laughs> anyway, here's another DS course. I really didn't talk a whole lot about that Waluigi circuit, but... Um... I'm actually not sure where I used my mushroom on this course. I didn't talk a whole lot about Waluigi Circuit, but I, um... I wasn't really expecting to, uh... But that's what I was talking about earlier when I said that a lot of the time it's just better driving and maybe better mushroom usage, but sometimes just cutting the corners tighter and, uh, avoiding... A lot of the stops will uh, will result in a better time. At least it has for me. That's gonna be a s oh okay. So we are we are good. We are good on that. I thought I thought I was gonna I thought I was gonna burn out. Shit. Yeah, it was um, it was a strange experience, for sure. Looking at him and. Uh, going so is that all you do is, is watch stuff on tv i don't understand how people do it i don't watch tv and i'm not saying that you know i'm, I'm so much better than people for not watching tv but while it's good to shut off and just enjoy something occasionally i need to do that more for sure the opposite is true for people who, who only watch stuff you know and the, the new the new version of this is basically Netflix, you know? People who just, the, all they do is fucking watch stuff on Netflix. And I'm like, you're so dreadfully fucking boring. And they go, oh, well, I've been working. Uh, th th good, good for you. But, like, do you have any kind of outlet whatsoever to, to make stuff? Anything whatsoever? And I get that, you know, you're not going to have all the time in the world to make stuff, but... You know, assuming that you're not going for, a, you know, some kind of crazy career, which a lot of people don't seem to, you know, a lot of people don't say, oh, well, I'm beholden to this corporation, so I'm going to work really hard and get to, like, a senior management position, 
maybe at like their HQ, you know, and uh, make a career out of it that way. Some people do that. That's cool. That's fine. Um, but for people who don't, which is a whole lot of us, you know, a lot of the time they just like, oh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a programmer or, you know, they go into a trade or something and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a tradesman, which I feel like programming is, is basically a trade. Um, I certainly don't see it as anything artful. It's very much a trade, especially when you're talking about people who just kind of, they, uh, they do, uh, freelance work. I know you don't really freelance when you're programming, or maybe you are. I, I'm not sure. That industry is kind of weird. But people who don't have, you know, they don't really, like, they're not out for a career. You will have a lot of time, not necessarily just downtime. But also, um, just time when you're working, you know, where you're thinking about stuff. And, I just feel like people could use their time more effectively. And I'm not saying that I'm, you know, perfect at that. I spend a whole lot of time in my room idle. I get that. Um, hopefully that gets fixed a little bit nicer for 2020. Um, But you you will have time, you know, to to do stuff. And, you know, no matter how tired you are, if you're genuinely, like, passionate about something, you'll make time for it. And I get that it gets even harder when you get older and you have, like, oh, yeah, you have a child. And, and I get that much. And it's going to be kind of weird, I know, for Cabby and I, because we do so much in the creative realm that, you know... It'll be fine when, you know, right now when we have this, like, entry-level career or job, you know, what whatever it'll be. But then, you know, what happens if that gets a little more serious and then there's work? And eventually, I, I, I figure that if my creative stuff doesn't take me anywhere and ends up, you know, becoming anything, it I'm not going to say it'll, it'll, it'll go out completely, but there will probably be times where I'm just not doing anything huge. Um, but that's the thing. Creative stuff doesn't need to be huge. You know, there's this weird sort of concept people have where they're like, oh, you know, isn't it going to be like a time sink? And yeah, it can be. And especially when it comes to if you're learning like visual art or music. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit to, to learn this stuff. That's why you start at an early age when you have all the time in the world. And then eventually you won't even need to relearn that stuff. You know, you won't need to, oh, I'm spending all this time figuring out how to notate or how to uh, do perspective or what have you, because you'll already know that stuff. Um, but even if you're not doing that stuff, it doesn't take fucking ages to like sit and doodle. It doesn't take ages to, oh, I'm gonna maybe like write a bit. And I kind of hate the way that people, especially when it comes to writing, a lot of people, oops, a lot of people consider writing, if it's not, 50,000 fucking words, if it's not some kind of novel or it's some kind of epic, they can't conceive of writing that isn't gigantic. They can't conceive of microfiction. They can't conceive of short stories. You know, a lot of time when they look at the short stories of, like, I don't know, Salinger or someone like that, they go, oh, you know, that's basically the side work because all they can conceive of is, the, is their novel work. Whoops. And it, that frustrates me to no end because I don't work in that realm. I could, I could pad the shit out of everything I do and maybe at some point come up with a novel, but I think at best I work at novella length, you know, and that's fine. In fact, it's honestly better because people don't have shit tons of time. And I know I've been saying, you know, you have time, but you have time that you make time for, you know, you don't necessarily have all the time in the world to be experimenting and doing crazy shit, you know, just on a whim. Unless you have the money to sustain yourself, you know, potentially, like, I'm going to take a year off and explore. I know people do that. Um, but that's not all the time. You know, so people aren't going to go out of their way to uh, read something huge unless they sit down and make time for that. And I just feel like there's a whole lot of mileage people can get out of doing smaller work. You know, uh, and especially given that the stakes are so much lower for smaller work. If you have a novel, 
first off, it's incredibly easy to just fucking go off on tangents and ramble and do what I do, basically. That's perfectly... You, you can do that. Um, fuck. That was going well. You know, you can do that. But that means that you have to worry about the pacing of each chapter and how each chapter segues into another. And uh, if you are resolving all of those plot threads that you had early on and, you know, all this other shit. Whereas with a short story, you basically only need to keep track of one or two characters, you know? And it can be just as rewarding, if not more. Because, like I said, it's easy to ramble. It's easy to go off on tangents. It's easy to throw in shit that doesn't matter. And that's why you have so many ass novels where, you know, people just kind of like, oh yeah, fuck it. Let's let's go on a side quest for pussy. Let's just let's just let's just do whatever, you know, fuck it. Who cares? And that's so it's so disrespectful of the reader's time, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You know, with a short story you can't really do that because people are gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing? And people are going to be, what the fuck are you doing with a novel anyway? But um, with a short story, it'll be a whole lot more apparent. You have, to, you have to edit yourself more with a short story. And that's why I found my niche in that stuff. Because when I edit, when I have something specific I want to say, although I can go into a lot of detail, I don't tend to go off on tangents. You know? Or I do. But it's not like it's not related. It's not like it's just, fuck, I keep doing that. It's not like it's just out of nowhere. Usually it's my thoughts are walking, you know? Where, But when it comes to, like, a story where I'm like, okay, this character does this, they're going to have this kind of interaction, they're going to have a couple words, I see it in my head and I can edit, you know? I can, I can trim that down. And a lot of the time it'll be like, I don't know, 300 to 700 words. And that's fine. But people treat that shit as like, oh, it's, it's basically just, you know, it's basically just like a nice little appetizer. And it's like, some of the best things I've ever read have been super fucking short. So, you know, don't be bamboozled into the idea of, oh, because it's not a novel, it's po it's pointless. People, a lot of the time, they have no concept of writing that isn't a novel, you know? You talk to people about, oh yeah, I'm doing short story work, and they're like, the fuck is that? Usually it's not quite that, you know, blank and cutting off, but a lot of the time people will, will they'll, they'll just see it as like, oh, you know, it's... They're like sketches. They're like experiments. But, you know, we don't we don't have that kind of concept towards art. It's not like every drawing is some, you know, painted fucking mural on the side of a bridge that took the artist in question seven months. You know, there's a lot of people who do work on smaller sheets and, you know, prints and, uh, you know, there's a whole industry for fucking design work and you know shirts and what have you which are a whole lot smaller and that tends to make up the bulk of what an artist does is smaller work and at least with visual art i guess because there's the visual component people can look at that and they go oh yeah it's still pretty you know it's not huge but it's still pretty but with writing they don't they're like what the fuck can you do in 600 words and i'm like are you kidding me i can tell any story in 600 words <laughs> of course you can't really tell every story in 600 words but you can get to something satisfying with a whole lot out there in 600 words and i think a lot of people they're, they're either insecure or they're pretentious and they're like oh yeah i'm just gonna go off and just fucking have this huge ass and you know story and i see this sometimes with essays uh you know especially amateur essays like i there's a very prominent example on neo cities by the way that's how old this is i was using toad with the wee wheel and I got 215 on this course, so that's a full 20 seconds off. That's something I was, uh, I got ingrained in my head. I was way too ambitious when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I mean, it's perfectly normal to just go completely overboard. And to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a huge world. But realistically, you have room in your life. Total. For like your 70, 80 years. And that assumes that you focus on that shit. For like maybe two to four worlds some people only have one in them you know so when i see people who are just you know everything they do is huge i'm like that all it does is overwhelm you and it burns you out 
it burns you out really hard. And I know that because I've done that. I don't know if tricking that is actually faster or not. I'd have to check. Um, you know, people will look at, like, Tolkien or something, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's so amazing. But sometimes the stuff that actually, like, affects you the most is, like, incredibly short. Because there's no room for waffling. There's no room for... It's, it's, it's everything stripped down to its most base essentials. And, you know, like, there was a really prominent example of a guy on NeoCities who has a couple accounts now. I'm not going to mention it, but I'm sure, I'm sure if you're an active user, you know who it is. And he is the most pretentious fucking dickhead I've ever seen. Just, I... <laughs> you know, of course you're going to use anime as an example. Um, but every time he writes, it's like, dude, just tell me what you're trying to fucking tell me. Shit. Just, just say it. Just say it. We don't care how smart you are. Just have your point and say it. And the mark of a, like a really good essay writer is somebody who can get to that point in not just a snappy way, but also in a, a really almost kind of musical way. You know, you look at, you look at a, someone who does essays and not only do they have their point, but they also... You know, they put it in a way that grabs you, you know? Like, like you know, you have a, uh, an article about some music scene that you're trying to deride because the people in it are absolute fucking dickheads, right? And it's that... I can't believe he's vaguing and in his advised in. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm Meanie Tux. I'm coming back. Meanie Tux is coming back. 2020 will be the year that Nekujiro finally gets what she's been thirsting for. Anyway, so... Because <laughs> you know they're watching this. Most likely. Yeah, they're still kind of obsessed. They're strange. Um, where was I? You know, you have somebody who's like doing an essay, right? And it's not that they're able to, you know, string it out to like crazy lengths but that they're able to get these like snappy descriptions about, you know, and they're able to impart the way that they word things and their writing style on uh, a piece that still manages to be short and snappy and uh, convey the actual message. And that's what separates out a fucking pretentious dickhead from somebody who's like genuinely doing uh, good work. And somebody who you you know you, their essays you you look at them and they go wow this guy's a really good essayist uh, is you know do they get on with their fucking point and that counts for so much and people don't understand that you want your shit to resonate it doesn't need to be an epic it doesn't need to be three fucking huge books worth of material to be a world that people are invested in. If you're talking about fiction, and if you're talking about non-fiction, a lot of the time, it's still your storytelling ability. I mean, storytelling is so innate in humans that you look at your, you know, how somebody can tell a story, and there's just so many ways to do it, and there's so many ways to make it so full of personality. And people just kind of, they, they just kind of waffle along. They just kind of ramble. And yeah, if you're doing a big series like that, like with Full Metal Alchemist, you just kind of tell the story you're trying to tell and then end it. There's a lot of things where, you know, the Pokemon is a pretty great example, now that we're talking about Nintendo stuff, um, where, you know, there's a cash cow. There's very much a cash cow. It stopped being anything creative or even remotely artistic, and... You know, people will go, oh, well, they're a business. That tired fucking nonsense. Just because you're making money off it doesn't mean it needs to be totally devoid and soulless. Um, but Pokemon lost the plot two fucking generations ago. In fact, maybe three. Depends on if you believe Charon or not. Um, 
you just kind of at some point what what else what else do you do with this what else are you trying to do with this you have to go somewhere with it otherwise even the people that like it are just gonna kind of like oh yeah you know they might still like it but there's not gonna be anything special about it they're gonna be like oh yeah it was another it was another thing that i liked from it you know and it's not gonna be their favorite and I, I don't think that everything you need to make needs to be vying for somebody's favorite. But I think it should be at least vying for your favorite. But again, that's not really Nintendo. It's not really Pokemon. It's not, you know, because that's a huge franchise. I just don't think that franchises need to be huge, basically. And I think the, the race to the top has kind of made everything so cracked out and... Um, just not worth it really because there's no room for personality when everything is so huge and so overwhelming and honestly you know there is room for epics there is absolutely room for epics but people have to be really dedicated to it people have to be like really dedicated to uh you know what you're trying to do because Again, it's a massive time stamp. So, if you, you know, if you think you have some huge point and you need three books to tell it, you need a series to tell it, then, yeah, I guess go for it. I mean, certainly I would be a hypocrite if I didn't mention, you know, my little fucking furry fantasy world that <laughs> Niku isn't here to bother me about. Um, but... I'm also not at the point where I'm able to properly handle a project like that, which is a large reason why I've put it aside. So, I'm doing smaller stuff right now. Smaller stuff is what takes me, it's what feels good, not only to write, but also to read, and it's it's not terribly taxing, you know, aside from my nerves, which I'm still working on. Yeah, exactly. You know... With a shorter series like that, you have more of an ability to sort of just get to the heart of things, honestly. You know, it's not... People aren't getting confused. It tends to be pretty clear what you're trying to do. And that's fine. You just kind of do it. You know? I think there's something kind of admirable, honestly, about people who just, you know... They, ha they don't have pretensions about their work. They're just like, oh yeah, so I tried to do this, and this is what I ended up doing, and that's that. I should have probably drifted there. You know, it affects everything from the way your stories go to your characters. You know, people like characters that are memorable. They like them snappy. And a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, you know. I, I see this. There's one of two things I will I see with people who, who are, like, amateur character creators. Either they operate in such nothingness that there's nothing to latch on to. Either in a character's visual design or in their personality. And as a result, you're just kind of like, well, what the, what was your point? What was your point here? They didn't have one, you know? Or maybe they're just not skilled enough to have... Really, everything about a character needs to reinforce a central point. I mean, sure, you can have other points. You can have side things. You can have funny things, you know? But you gotta go somewhere with it. You gotta have a reason. So either they operate in total nothingness, or... Um, where was I going with this? Speaking of rambling, sometimes you forget your own fucking point. Oh, and I see their home. And my little sister is home too, so... <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to pop out for a moment, and... If you if you hear me be like, oh, I'm on stream right now. Yeah, just, just know what that's about. I might have to pop out anyway. I just want to finish up this race. Um. Come on. 
feeling too terribly. I know I just stopped, but I, it's because I totally forgot what my point was. Um, a lot of the time, they just don't, they don't have a point, basically, is, is what I was trying to say. So, they kind of, they either don't try, or, you know, they do try, and it, it just kind of ends up totally arbitrary. Like, oh yeah, this character likes strawberry milk, okay. You know, and again, you can have characters that are, are kind of, you know, they're fun, they're, uh, or they have funny moments about them, but it really should add up to a cohesive whole at the end of the day. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Borb's character as an example, Arthur. You know, for a long time, wow, that was going so well and then it wasn't. For so long, Arthur was nothing. Arthur was bland as fuck. What was, what really was there about him? You know, he had some semblance of personality, but it wasn't like a thing that felt particularly meaningful, you know? But then, I don't remember where it was down the line, but we started, um, we started experimenting more with him being kind of like a Texan. I think because I was trying to play off of the Southern hospitality kind of thing, we ended up just like, oh yeah, he would fit as uh, like a Southerner. And then we just kind of made him an insane cowboy, and it worked beautifully. It was like, oh, wow, this character has a reason to exist now. And that's the thing. It still, it doesn't, it doesn't clash with the character. It reinforces what you're trying to accomplish with him, which is he's a side character who's kind of a character, you know? So you have your point with him, and, you know, he's still a pleasant guy, but he's kind of a ridiculous pleasant now. Like... His, uh, his taste in records kind of thing. Um, or, uh, Cabby gave the, the example uh, one night while we were talking about uh, characters of the, the, the mental image of him just drunk as all hell and trying to uh, be a smooth talker but, you know, not swearing and still saying golly every three words you know like he just it's so charming and honestly humor is so intrinsic in our characters uh and their ways of being endearing to us people in general you know you have a care you have somebody who's funny what's the first thing that's going to come to mind when you think of that person oh, yeah, he was a funny motherfucker he was great you know even if he was kind of a dick, even if there was something wrong with him, you'd still be like, oh yeah, he's, uh, you know, he made me laugh a bunch, you know? So that tends to be the kind of thing that you remember about people is their sense of humor. And humor is also really intrinsic in the way that we uh, empathize with people. You know, you have a character who is like clearly like hurting, like clearly in pain, clearly going through something, and they just try to laugh it off, you know? And... If you, if you like that character, you feel really fucking bad. And why is that? Because, you know, you have somebody who's clearly trying to carry on. They're clearly trying to be still pleasant, but they have every reason not to be. So humor isn't just intrinsic in the way that we interact, in the way that we like people, but it's also intrinsic in the way that we empathize and we create emotional bonds with a character, with uh, a person especially. Really, I remember I said once that the best way you can determine if a character works or not is if you can imagine them as a real person. And I still stand by that, but I add on another acid test, perhaps. Where, if you have a character, can you put them in a strange situation and be able to play that for laughs? And if the answer is yes, and I mean, it, it kind of depends, ultimately, it kind of depends on the the genre you're dealing with um but if the answer is yes then there's a greater chance that if the character that you have and i don't mean a character that you can just go batshit with i mean a character that you can legitimately play for laughs through a scenario if the answer is yes and you can put them with another character and they'll interact in some kind of interesting way then yeah there's a good chance you have a good character there so you know uh someone like uh uh, another Pennyverse lad, like my Colton, um, you know, he's got a lot of issues, he's, you know, kind of a sad dude, but 
especially as he, uh, you know, gets better from that, his sense of humor will eventually start peeking out in his, you know, the way I write him and in the stories and what have you. And, uh, ultimately, I, I intend for that to, to become more of a, of a central tenet of him, you know, where he's definitely a weirdo, but he's, he's a weirdo with kind of a heart to him. Uh, he's not just, because you see that a lot with what people will try to do with sad characters is they'll just try to make them so maudlin and it doesn't work. It just kind of, if it doesn't feel emotionally manipulative, it's just kind of overwhelming. Like if it's done correctly and the character is just nothing but sad, uh, you're going to feel overwhelmed. And if the character has nothing, uh, you know, it's done wrong, then it's going to feel emotionally manipulative. So humor and genuinely curious things are so important with, uh, with characters and with people. And I'm sure this I got on this topic from something, but good luck if I can remember what that was. But I don't know. Uh, this is just the nature of character creation is something that I think about a whole lot because I look at, you know, anytime I get, uh, in, you know, involved in some kind of piece of fiction or in a work, uh, I look at, I look at certain things and I try to see who's who's jiving with me and who's not. And a lot of the time, it comes down to, you know, it's not me as an audience member who doesn't get it. And a lot of people just want to blame, you know, the audience when something falls flat. They're like, oh, well, it's not meant for you. It's not meant for you. And it's like, that's a that's your fault, dude. That's, that is your fault. That there's only a certain class of people who can understand this character. And it's not me. Basically. It, a good character should just be automatic. A good character should just kind of... You immediately get his point. You know? Like, I think of House. I think of... I was... When I was in Ohio, I was watching House a lot. <laughs> Gabby can, uh... Vouch for, you know, what that exactly did to my already kind of strange mental state at the time. Uh, let's just say I went through a bit of a health scare. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously fine, but... It's, I, I'm... I'm good on people being, you know... Sick for right now, honestly. And I found out that apparently my brother is... He's got the flu currently, which is great. So if I die, you might know why. Um, but I don't plan on it anytime soon. Um, but you look at a character like House, or even Wilson for that matter. I like Wilson a lot. I like the way that he is... He's played as this kind of... Like, I feel like... Because he has such a fundamentally different personality and philosophy on things to House... I feel like he's a lot more human. You know, House is funny, obviously, and like I said, humor is such a huge... I, I don't know. I'm just playing Mario Kart and rambling about character creation, honestly, and writing. I don't know how I got on the topic. Maybe somebody can, can trace this back like a half hour. Um, but anyway... Um, you know, House is clearly funny, but he's not, he's not just, you know, like, he's not just funny, I guess. And this, again, it's, it's another example of how this show is so wonderfully written, where he has, um, like, he's clearly disturbed. And you see this as he, you know, as the seasons go on. There's clearly something in him that never fully developed, or... And maybe it's explained a little bit better, because I only really watched up to Season 3. Um, but... Like, he clearly cares on some level. He has a bizarre way of showing it, you know? And a lot of the time, he tries to deny showing it, or doing his usual dickhead house kind of roundabout way of explaining it. Um, I'm having a really hard time with this jump. Whereas, Wilson has some of the same motivations, um, but he's a lot more understandable, and uh, not just understandable, but kind of readable, and 
the interplay between him and House is so great. Like, genuinely really good. Uh, and I know I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know because House is fucking huge. But anyway. Um, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Is that you have two characters who absolutely can get put in a strange situation. And, you know, it can be played for laughs. It can be done whatever. Um, and it doesn't require a bunch of random details about them that a lot of people like to put in their characters because it's like, oh, it's depth, it's information. It's like, no, your character liking strawberry milk is not is not useful information. This does not develop your character anymore. I'm sorry. That's just not how it goes. Um, but they have such unique personalities. And they both have their hooks that with uh, the right kind of writer, absolutely what they do uh, is it works, you know? It, it doesn't matter the situation for the most part. It just kind of works. Um, I have totally lost the plot here, but... Whew. Again, I think about this stuff a lot. Because a lot of the time... It's, it's, people make, uh, you know, a piece of work sort of not house stream yet. Wasn't I so, uh, enjoyable with that show, Cabby? Um. Wow. Eight thousandths of a second. Nice. I'll, uh, I'll let you go on with this train of thought, and then I'll respond to that blurb. Fuck. Alright, that seems to be the thing. One thing I will say about House is that um, in anyone else's lap, I feel like you'd probably come off as uh, a totally unreadable dickhead. Um, Lordy. you know, he would just kind of be the asshole, because he can be, but, you know, with him, it feels like there's always, a, you can always understand it, even if he's kind of ridiculous about it, you can always understand it, and that's the thing, is that your character's motivations can't be arbitrary, it's not to say that they have to be, you know, the most noble thing in the world, but you have to understand why they're doing it. And I think a lot of people, a lot of amateur writers sort of get caught up in that, where they don't really... This, you know, if you're not... If you can't trace your character's train of thought through a situation and go, okay, I understand why they're doing this, then um, there's a problem. You know, and House... Even when he's being a massive dick, there's a, there's probably a good reason for it. Even if that reason is he just doesn't want to be there, you know. He's he's still a plenty understandable character, and that goes for everybody on that show. To be perfectly honest, because like I said, it's so fucking it's so great, it's such a good show. Anyway, um, I remember hearing people talk about how different the protagonist of Full Metal Alchemist is compared to others in the genre. He only fights if he has to. And the entire series is a test of his morality because of the nature of his plot, of, of his job in the plot. Um, he refuses to kill for the government, and yeah, exactly. And that's that's a good example of uh, of uh, an interesting character being placed in a, in a unique situation. And I think a lot of people they get kind of scared of unique situations. They get kind of weirded out about it you know and they don't think they don't think 
what will generally cre genuinely create good chemistry uh, for a character. And you see this sometimes with especially people who try to do, um, they try to do more low to the ground stuff. You know, when people try to do fantasy, it, it gets overblown and it's crazy. But when it comes to uh, just like what could essentially be considered everyday writing, I guess slice of life is probably how you put it, but I hate that term. Um, they tend to just be really boring. But the thing is, there's so much information and so much, not so much information. I'm reading about what Borb said. Um, there's so much interest going on around us. You just have to look for it. You just have to put the right character in the right spot. You know, uh, and I, speaking of Borb's writing, I remember there was the, a while before we had, uh, Arthur's hook for the most part, I remember that you were trying to do a story with him and it was mostly just him and his house. And I was like, well, that's not really interesting. You can't really do anything with that. And I think it showed in how you never finished it because you just didn't know what to do with it. So really a good idea, somebody who knows what they're doing and a good character will write itself. You don't need to write that. You just need to tell it. You don't actually need to come up with that because a character's motivations will always be consistent or they should always be consistent. That's not to say, you know, it's like, you have, like, take a character who does an atrocity, right? A character who, like, oh, he murdered somebody. Well, why did he do that? And you can't just say, oh, well, it's because he's fucking evil. No, that doesn't work like that, especially if that's a character who's normally considered good. You know, everything happens for a reason, especially something as dire as that. So you take a character who is, um, you know, he might have had to kill for, you know, you know, st something got out of hand. He thought he was being attacked. Um, you know, he thought he could get away with it. There was some motive. He didn't like the person. That does occasionally happen, you know. Uh, but it's not usually just as simple as that. You know? So, a lot of the time we can't fully read people. And we just kind of assume that characters are kind of the same where we shouldn't be able to fully read them, but we should. With people, people are a whole lot more visible. People are a whole lot more understandable and readable than we give them credit for. Because even the stuff that seems totally arbitrary, like, for example, insecurity. Insecurity in a character is huge, and it presents a whole lot of options for character development. It's such a big thing, and it seems arbitrary to us. Like a character who looks like they're about to go do something. They're about to do something big. They're about to perform or something, and then they just call it the fuck off. And you go, well, what, what was that about? You know? And it's totally understandable when you realize, oh, well, that character got kind of spooked. You know. Oh, apparently YouTube censored Borb for something that didn't actually have swearing or anything in it. Um, I should mention, by the way, that I have it set to live chat. So, uh, I'm not sure what it's what's going on. And apparently, it did to Cabby too. So, apparently, even making you a mod wouldn't fix it. So, I don't know. But she said, um. Basic character interests are good for flavor, but no one knows how to do it right. Um, so that was what she was talking about with this jug of milk thing. Uh, yeah. I'm streaming. didn't seem to like that much <laughs> i'm in the middle of something i don't care actually how long have i been going for i've been going for two hours yeah i'm not gonna stop in the middle of this i'd like to just finish up this cup and then i'll i'll uh i'll sign off a little bit early it doesn't have to be a three hour stream all good um, yeah, I would probably have to understand the show and the character to really understand what that's all about. Um, 
but usually it, it reinforces something about a character. Um, or even not necessarily reinforces, but occasionally going against something that seems appropriate for a character is really good for humor. Um, you know, so going back to Arthur's record collection, for example, if he liked weird music, this is another example that I'm just stealing from Cabby because it makes perfect sense. If he just liked weird music, which is how somebody else would leave it, doesn't really... Okay, all right. Well, what does that mean? But if you say he has a record collection that consists of two sh two different, totally ridiculous albums, actually two singles to be perfectly honest, um, and you see what those are, and then you juxtapose them with who Arthur is, it suddenly becomes fucking hilarious. You know. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. is sometimes, if, especially if it's something for humor, that small little detail, it can't just be arbitrary. It can't just be out of nowhere. It has to, in some way, work with the rest of the character. Either working for it to reinforce something, say, for plot reasons, or working against it for humor purposes. I feel like people... Yeah, now you guys are talking about anime, so I'll just let you talk about anime, because I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do the Chinese cartoon thing. Sorry. I will play Chinese video games though, as I'm doing now. I don't think I'll be able to cut a huge amount of time off this uh, PB, but I should be able to at least get a second or two off. Oh, that's fair then. Man, are we all going to start 2020 getting sick? I actually don't know if I'm getting sick. I don't think I am, but since, again, he apparently has the flu. Yeah, that's going to be fucking great. I really hope I don't get the flu. But then again, I don't know. His house was kind of disgusting, so. Um, but, I mean, how long is flu's incubation period, Cabby? Do you know? Or anyone in the chat, really? Does anyone know how long it takes for flu to sort of uh, incubate and start showing symptoms? Because I've been home four or five days now. So if it's not showing symptoms now, maybe there's reason to be optimistic. That was a pretty consistent three laps. That was cool. Around a day or two. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just managed to dodge that bullet. I've actually never gotten the flu, so. Lucky me. And let's see if we can finish this up real quick, because I apparently have somebody waiting for me. Now we're on Peach Gardens. I've been making pretty good, uh, one to four days. Mon, that's not a good thing. <laughs> that's really not a good thing, Mon. Although that sounds more like depression, honestly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of worrying. doing fine, honestly.
Do you see how absolutely mad I drive, by the way? I shouldn't have used that mushroom. Ah, Lordy. I can believe it. It's a sick world out there. I can believe it. But I'm a healthy bitch, so it's fine. I'm just a little squishy. Oh, baby. That shouldn't have worked. It's a national phenomenon that a bunch of people are getting sick in the winter. God bless. Come on. So, um, I mean, if you don't mind me asking in front of an audience of potentially whoever wants to watch this, um, why haven't you been eating, Mom? You, you are right. Fuck. Before I'm about to go into details about how our digestive tract decided to kill itself. Don't really feel it. That does not sound good. I mean, if it's only been happening for like three months, then, I mean, it's not immediately lethal, but also, I don't trust that. Although I can't say I'm any different? That sounded fucking emo. Oh shit, that was actually pretty good. tab over here, so. Uh, see, I keep going to the wall. I need to pay attention. You know, it never occurred to me until now, and... 
Maybe that was a good thing that you have saliva. I guess this one's just a little bit more optimized than the rest. Maybe I'll go back and try Ghost Valley 2 again, although I don't really think there's any time for me to cut there, because it's such a short course, and I was already driving pretty mad uh, on my current PB, so again, maybe not. Like, you and your fucking periods, I swear. So, I'm going to float this idea right now, because I, uh, I mentioned this a little bit in the chat, but I've been thinking about this a lot, and uh, I'm potentially going to be adding... Shit. Come on, that was getting good. Um, I'm potentially going to add a times page to my site, because I've always liked that thing that people had on uh, GeoCities and the early internet about uh, times pages you know, for various games. And I know that there's there's rankings and there's leaderboards and what have you for uh, this kind of stuff now, but that's boring. There's no fun in that. There's no fun, especially given that how much of that is, is first off, legitimate times, and second, it just incentivizes, you know, competition, which is fair, but also I can't compete with any of that. Just on the nature of well, I mean, this entire stream has been proof of why I probably should never drive an actual car. Um, but I, I just like the aesthetic of times pages. So, my question is, because I've destroyed a bunch of my PBs on stream, um, should I dump this save back to my Wii and use it in the times page, or because... Or, uh, you know, because it's on emulator, should it even count, I guess, is what I'm trying to ask. Uh, because either way, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I can't drive a real go-kart for shit. I went go-karting one time with Aaron, and man, that was a disaster. I just kept bumping into the walls. You saying it should count, Mon? This, these, uh, these dolphin runs. I just know that there's a, uh, you know, for places like the Elite and things, they require you to do it on real hardware. There's a lot of things we got to do, but um, easier said than done. Although maybe, maybe it'll be better in 2020. Oh, balls! Fuck! Come on. Um, I don't think I could count go-karting as, uh, as driving practice, but okay. Right, but the timing is different. You, you remember how often I was, uh, I was choking out on Ghost Valley 2? I swear the timing feels a little bit different on this emulator than it does on uh, on hardware. Fuck. So I feel like that's sort of the reason why uh, they don't allow emulator use in the Elite. I, it doesn't matter because it's just for my own amusement, but 
I'd like to have some kind of standards with it because I don't know. I would. I'm tempted to, by the way, add an entire game section to my site because I mean I have that Minesweeper page, but um, I kind of want to have that for a bunch of other games too. Either uh, games that you know I have times and high scores in, or. Um, just games that I like, potentially post my friend codes, whatever, you know? So I'm thinking that might be something that I add just sort of for funsies, uh, come 2020, is uh, the full game section on my site just for stuff that I like, because I don't know who you are. Who are you? How did you find me? This is creepy. Anyway. Because um, that's sort of been uh, my thing as of late. I'm trying to shake off that weird concept that I had for so long of everything I did need to be content, basically. Shit. I'm fucking up so bad on this course. Uh, everything I did need to be content, basically. You know, everything needed to have some huge point and... I'm just trying to get back to like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea, and let me do that, you know? Because it's not only healthier, but also it's, I guess, more interesting. I keep missing the boosts. Let me try that again. I was constantly slamming into the walls when I uh, went go-karting. There was some place in... Some place in New York, I think. I think Danny went, too. Wow, was it that long ago that Aaron, Danny, and I were all together? That's crazy. Because we haven't been a trio in years and years, since, like, middle school, junior high. Mostly because Danny went to Pokemon Mountain, and Aaron went back to New York, and then I was alone again. Uh, it is genuinely painful living out here, so. have to not hit the wall or hit these chain chomps for that matter because this is turning out to be a really good PV. Fuck! Alright. Sorry. One more time because I know there's time to cut here. I just keep screwing up. One more time. And I guess if I screw up on this run I'll just say screw it. See, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with that. But, I mean, I do like Peach Gardens. It's a, it's a nice looking course. So, I suppose I don't really mind if I have to play it another couple times. I gotta remember to not hit these gopher holes, or whatever the hell these things are. But they, they do slow you down. They act as off-road, so... No, I haven't. And I'm going to be ending the stream after I play the time trials, so... Uh, because, like I said, my little sister's home, and I'm currently being fucking bothered about that. 
I, I sound miserable about that. I actually do like her. We had a huge conversation the other day that was really nice. And I don't normally get to have those kinds of conversations with real life people. I mean, again, it, for my actual internet play, I'm going to be playing on console still. And to be perfectly honest, I only really went here so I could, you know, play this on stream. Uh, I would, like I said before, I would like to eventually get some kind of capture solution, even if it's just like an HDMI thing, because, I mean, I already have a component to a HDMI uh, adapter, so the capture device only needs to be HDMI, and uh, potentially use that to stream my Wii Direct in, and I wouldn't have to worry about the emulator or anything, and be able to actually play games that use the Wiimote. Right now, I'm on, currently using this RathMev adapter, and it's a weird system. It is a weird, messy system of, you know... It all works, technically speaking, for Dolphin. You know, the classic controller is obviously a Wii controller, so it works fine. But when it comes to um, games that require a Wiimote... Oh my god. Apparently... Apparently YouTube is censoring you guys again, so I'll read that in a moment. I just want this race to be over and done with. I'm not quite leading my ghost like I was last time. But whatever, as long as I cut time, I don't care. sister is great. She is. I've grown fonder of her over the past couple of, uh, past couple years. Okay, we just have two more to go. Let's, let's do this. Let, 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 let's do this. Oh, I hate this course. This course blows. Honestly, if I can't kill any time on this course, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Because I fucking hate this course anyway, so. This course is just way too aggressively winding. And everybody wants to play it online, which is so annoying. It's like, dude, play something else. Play something else please thank you and when you certain start to get like items and stuff involved in this course it's just it's it's a mess it's it's a genuine mess Fun, fun. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Welcome to Mario Kart. You can see how much I hate this course, don't you? I do think there's time to cut off on this course. I just... I don't care if this is one of my better tracks. Just because I find this... Again, aggravated. Technically, this gray stuff doesn't really count as off-road, which is nice. 
because it's way faster to just use it as, uh, as cushioning, basically. Ooh, that was close. See, I just... I guess you just have to be really aggressive with the turning. Although, I don't know how to be more aggressive than to drift. <sighs> that was good. Yes, yes, you're very clever, boy. It's not a terrible looking course, I guess. I just... I find it kind of aggravating to actually drive. I don't know why I'm doing my best to avoid the grass as much as I am, because I find that it's actually not too bad as far as off-road goes. In fact, aside from these mud patches, which is really where I'm skipping a lot of the time, um, there's really not a whole lot of off-road on this course, which means I could potentially just and do it that way. You understood what I meant. I mean, that probably makes sense. There's those arrows right there. So they probably meant you to actually go into this, the grass. Okay. Yeah, I hit the wall there. That's, that's fine. This is fine. There we go. That's better. See, I'm not going to be cutting any time whatsoever off this course. Maybe like half a second at the best. Unless I have some kind of weird fuck up on the third lap. I don't remember. Again, it's been so long since I set these ghosts. And yes, I did just have a stroke. You understood what I meant. It's fine. I guess they want you to go so wide. Which sounds counterintuitive, but that seems to be what you have to do. Well, I definitely put a little bit of time between me and that dude. Cool. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm expecting like a second, maybe. Lakitu! Three seconds! Okay. All right. Again, that's better than I was expecting. I could probably cut that down further now that I know not to hit the walls and how not to hit the walls. But let's just get this over with. Let's just finish up the last course. And we'll call the stream there because I have to go do stuff. <laughs> I was wondering when someone would, uh, would ask that. So Jason was a really early OC of mine. And, uh, I don't know why I decided to make him a me, but I did. I, frankly, I don't give a fuck about me's. Oh, damn. Uh, but I decided to make him a me, and then I decided to make him my, my me, for whatever reason. He's, um, he's one of the four, uh, hostages in Counter-Strike. That was, that's basically what he looks like. He's, he's one of the, he's one of the hostages. Um, because I, I intended him for something Gary's mod related. And that's a blast from the past. Me doing anything Gary's mod. Fuck.
But yeah, that was before I was actually, you know, creating characters, so... I've tried to give him a personality, but I, at this point I've just kind of left him as, like, I don't know, an early... That's where Felix came from, by the way, if you, uh... If you know about Felix, my little otter lad, he was originally an Oshawott, and he came from that same idea. Whoops. In fact, he was Jason's shoulder pet, basically, so that gives you some indicator of how important he was. Fuck. I'm so done with this right now, honestly. It's been three hours. Thanks for coming out, though, guys. Watching, uh, watching me do time trials. I hope that this hasn't been as, uh, as pointless as I was hoping it wasn't. But, uh, at the same time, I just wanted to play Mario Kart on stream. And I just had the perfect reason to do it. I think I will try to replicate these on hardware. Um, it has been a new stream, hasn't it? Because there are some ghosts of this that I actually really like. Um for some of these runs, but I also just, I guess I would feel a little bit better, or maybe it would just be nicer to say, oh yeah, these were all done on hardware. Um, bragging rights, I suppose. Again, not that a whole lot of these are particularly difficult to uh, to get. I don't think there was anything that was really super close. I think the Mario circuit. I actually don't remember. It was the one N64 one we played, or Mario Raceway, maybe it was. Uh, that was kind of annoying with those turns. But. Oh, well. I guess it's been fun practicing. I actually don't use a classic controller when I play. I use a GameCube controller. And I just realized I haven't been using my mushrooms. I should probably find the place where I use my mushrooms and then I'll use them. Maybe I'll use them in this garden area. Because I don't think there's any other significantly off-road bits. Well, that was stupid. That's why I'm going to just start using it there. How about it? Um, but I actually play the GameCube controller. Just because I... Whoops. Alright, so go in the middle. So if I do that, go in the middle. Um, I just like the way the, game can, the GameCube controller feels. I was always a PlayStation kid growing up, so I, I'm very used to the DualShock. But... Um, The GameCube controller it has a nice, satisfying bit of bulk to it, although I have a really cheap one. It's a GameStop one. So, I can get super fucked when it comes to that. Damn it. What did Borb say? <laughs> My brother's name is Kyle, so. If only that was a applicable a board sent something in the chat that's why I laughed Bitch. maybe not try to go in the inside although it's kind of hard to tell with the shrubbery there maybe I can cut it this way I end up in the grass, but that's kind of fine. Oh, my leg. Yeah, I'm very, very eager to wind this down. Thankfully, this is the last one. That was all right. There we go. Oh, come on. One more time. I can't see what you're sending, Borb. 
Although I see it's something Mario related. Tell you what I'm really looking forward to getting back into Animal Crossing, which is on the absolute opposite of the spectrum to uh, to Mario Kart. I mean, they're both filthy casual games, but one is highly competitive and the other one is highly competitive if you like the Happy Home Academy, I guess. You do, and that means you have to start it, so. I already have a save from ages ago that I will be loading back up, um, only to sell it to Nook, sell my town to Nook, run off with the bells. I wonder, does town quality determine the amount of money that you get? I actually, I'm going to have to check that, because... If so, I might actually have to play my old save for a bit to clean up town so I can get the maximum amount of bells and deal with all of my villagers being like, where have you been for like two and a half years? And it's like, well, uh, I've been dealing with, uh, you know, that crazy girl who came into town and gave me dresses all the time? Yeah, I'm dealing with her. That's, that's where I've been. I actually don't remember how long it's been since I played. I think it was like a 2016, 2017 thing. Oh, there we go. That's... Okay, that's the proper line you're supposed to take, I guess. Gosh, do you know how glad I am that she's gone? Can I just say that publicly? She's motherfucking gone, and I'm glad. <laughs> I know Brianna bashing is, is no, no new topic for us. But... Gosh, I'm free. Free of all that actual fucking misery. Or again, sending like memes or something. That was close. That would have ended the run right there. This is tense. This is actually kind of tense. Mostly because I just want this over with, but I think this is going to be a good run. Knock on wood. I think we're home free. I think so. Come on. Finish before three minutes. Nope. Whatever. It's a high three minutes. I will take it. Again, pretty consistent laps, too. I'm satisfied with that. Cutting eight entire seconds off that. Nice. All right. So, that was three hours. It was a good three hours. I actually really enjoyed that. I was playing something I actually enjoy, you know? So, that tends to help. Did you guys enjoy it? Forbes, stop sending stuff. Jesus Christ. Are you out of your fucking mind? What? What are these? Why are you... Lordy. And I got in a ramble. I got in a ramble, so that was good. I'm just checking stream analytics and what have you.
Average watch time was 45 minutes. Chat rate, very sporadic, but pretty good throughout. That's that's an emo Kirby right there, Forbes. That's an emo Kirby. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm about ready to. I don't actually know how to end streams, you know. But as long as you guys enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. I'm back. That's all I got to say is I'm coming back because, you know, Ohio. So, um, I'll see you in the new year then. You know, we're gonna get right back to PMD next time that's gonna be fun yeah yeah Vorb loves it when I say that so you know but you're, you're gonna wait you're gonna fucking you're gonna wait that's what you're gonna do you're gonna wait um yeah actually can I just um can I just plug something real quick here before we're uh, before we're through if you uh, missed the big end of the year post there's a big end of the year post on the blog uh from everybody here at Somnolescent, you should uh, you should read it if you haven't, and you're uh, you happen to be watching this because it's been a busy year. But um, yeah, that's gonna do it for me. I'm uh, I'm Marito. I'm tired. Um, and fuck off. <laughs>